win these these lanes pretty hard because if you don't it's going to be difficult to make plays to come back it, it's pretty much all on tiny at that point as their initiator uh so visage and viper i'd say both of those heroes really need to have a good lane medusa ideally obviously you'd like to win but i mean she's gonna farm no matter what so i think if her lane is rough it's not that bad for heroic Man, I am so excited! God, best of five grand finals between the Starbucks and Heroic is now underway for those of you who are just joining us. If you have missed any of the South American quals, I pity you. It was so much fun. There were some really <laughs> sick series. There were some amazing uh, drafts and kind of interesting gameplay. But now we get to the two final teams. And honestly, I, I did kind of expect these two teams to be here. You and I, we just covered the main card event that uh, a Starbucks actually won, and they looked very good. Um, and Heroic has kind of been, like you said, the gatekeepers from South America for a little bit. Ward dropped onto the high ground. They're looking for MNZ's life silver. That is like the worst hero you can run into. 350 MS here at nighttime. Yeah, and unfortunately, they placed that Observer to try to get a kill, but... Um, that was definitely spotted. If anyone was clicking that gyrocopter, even without it, they're, they're probably going to suspect they would do that kind of thing. So, curious if KJ will end up killing his own observer there. I like this. He's kind of like waiting by the side, seeing if he can catch someone off guard here, get some... Oh my... Did he just happen to miss him? Wow. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. They both walked around the tree at the same time. I don't think they know about this ward, I'll be honest. I think it's very possible that... He didn't give it away by, like, throwing anything up onto the high ground. And it might have been placed from slightly outside vision. But, yeah, you talked about it. Tiny with this Visage. This lane is really scary. It's it's super easy for him to build Soul Assumption stacks. So, that uh, damage will start to stack up pretty quickly. Looks like they got the lane to push out too, so you get those early levels in a safe spot. Top lane. I mean, there is some kill potential between Mars and Rubik. They got some good burst repositioning, so definitely got to be careful. But man, we see that damage output. Yor is just Yor. trying so hard not to get sniped, but it's going to be there. There's just only so many places you could run. First Blood goes to Schofield. Meanwhile, top lane. They grab another kill onto Michael. And there's kind of the threat of that gyrocopter in these early levels. He does uh, a lot of damage with that newly buffed rocket. Well, I guess not newly buffed, but debuffed rocket barrage. I'm a little bit interested in this mid lane. So, Analog opted for the first point in Nether Toxin. It is a very annoying ability to play into. Um, and rather than like wasting all of his money, uh, all of his mana on poison attack, he's just gone for another toxin to kind of push the lane, deal what damage he can. And it looks like he might actually be waiting to put a second point in it here at level three. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just, oh, okay. I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's still holding skill points. He might, um, yeah, I. that's not an approach I expected, but it kind of makes sense because Dragonite's wave clear is actually really bad. So if you just shove in the lane and farm, like you kind of counter Dragonite the hardest at level 6, more so than the poison attacks, trying to deal with the passes, like double bracer that Dragonite's build nowadays. It's uh, pretty difficult for you, I'd say. So maybe just opting, like, I'm just going to farm really quick. Okay, I, he still took two points in Q. Yeah, it was one of those things know. where it's like, do you wait <laughs> for it? And he does, but Dragon Knight, like you said, has the double bracer already done. Five poison attacks is a decent amount of damage, but this is a hero that definitely just walks it off, you know, type of thing. Rubs, rubs some dirt on it and comes back to the lane. You gotta take his armor off to do that. <laughs> he rubs the armor on his dirt, sorry. Or he rubs the dirt on his armor, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> or should have should have specified. <laughs> Gotta make it look battle worn, you know. I watched the anime. It's Something true. like that. I mean, all the poison from Viper is like just making the armor look bad. So you're just like rubbing it off.
All right. Dark Mago is starting to really have a rough time in the mid lane, but top lane, JK, uh, JK, KJ is going to go down. Good little setup here from the Rubik Telekinesis into that spear. A pretty solid counter, uh, or pretty classic like setup. We see Rubik kind of paired with a lot of these like stun heroes from the offlane with decent burst. Centaur, Mars, both kind of fill that option. It's a quick bottle refill as well. That's nice. All right. Mid lane's looking rough now. He has 16 CS, I will say. like He's doing great on CS. He Obviously, he does have to buy bottles, so he can just ferry out a salve, play as his double bracers, and just slowly make his way to his items. Um, we'll have to see like which of these heroes start to have a little bit more impact. I, I think, obviously, the level 5 is going to be the major problem for the DK here, is that third point in the poison attack is pretty overwhelming. In the top lane, Medusa's finished her arcane boots. They're almost here. And with that, it'll like, be really hard to kill her. So probably won't see too much happen there anymore. Rubik making a smoke play over to the mid lane. Not sure they can really kill Analog. They might be able to bait him on the like on a rune of some kind. But yeah, I don't know how you kill it's... the Viper with yeah, these two. The timing's weird. It's not like the power rune. So maybe they're trying to catch him off guard with a gank. He's scanning for this too. He feels he's like someone's like this Rubik is missing completely. Uh, and Dark Mago is just getting orb walked at his tower and he can't. Oh, what a good use of that iron branch. He would have taken so much damage. But now with the rotation Dark from Yor as well, they drop that Bramble Maze, the Dragon Tail on top of him. Analog will eventually go down. So the patience paying off for a Starbucks here as they manage to kind of recover a very difficult lane. And that's the best way to do it. Viper, not a mobile hero. Yeah, see if they can get punished for this, because Sacred, he's been on his own this whole time. So with that gank happening, they immediately run in trying to punish him. But thanks to these creeps, he's going to die. Coming. does take a good chunk of damage. That's huge, though. Six-minute rune is also going to go to like the DK, or I guess now the Dark Willow. And DK is uh, level six, so... Dragon farm available, and he'll be able to start putting some pressure on that mid tower in the downtime. Um, I know some people are like, lol, Viper losing to DK. I mean, for the most part, I don't think he actually lost the lane. It's a little bit of a draw originally, but the rotation in definitely salvages that, and that's one of just the good calls from a Starbucks. That being said, I don't know if DK can come back to the lane at all now that Viper Strike is, an, is online. Yeah, and I mean, he's got supports like sitting in the area. They're looking around. Top lane, they're looking for the Medusa though. Medusa. Yeah, that's a great find. She's gonna pop the stick. Has mana boots in one second. We'll actually give her a decent amount of HP to play around, but she might just burn nine HP. The spear from Mars will find it. Nicely done. As KJ now on the run, Dark Mago plenty fast thanks to the Dragon Form. Should be able to find the DK here and another kill now in the top lane. Very nicely found. And Yor almost manages to snipe that Wizarune, but I think I get a kill instead. He's got Lotus. There's the toss. Yeah, nicely done from Schofield. Good, good bait there. A great call with Dragonite recognizing like, yeah, I can't really go back mid. I'm not the best jungler. I got to get something done somewhere else. So he's going to head top, get that Medusa kill, take this tower pretty early here. And Viper was left alone mid, farmed, but Viper not actually very good at taking towers. He's going to rotate up here. Ooh, long teleport. So yeah. the spear is off. Yeah, this is a very dead Mars now. That's just, yeah, I mean, it's a good read by Analog just to at least punish something for this uh, play. And yeah, it kind of gets a little lucky that it's a long TP. So... Typically, you'd say the opposite. You're like, oh, no, log TP. But in that, that <laughs> regard, it did great. Um, I'm just looking at this lifestealer. He's actually having a great time bottom. What the heck? And yeah, Dark Mago's Vistage. down here now, too. He's looking. And yeah, the Visage yeah. lane maybe didn't go the way they were hoping. I mean, that's part of the reason Visage is a little bit out of the meta, though. With three heroes surrounding this life stealer, maybe he's in a little deep. Ah, the centaur, oh, the extra move speed, he's out. 
He's just like trying to get vision to scout a potential like gank, I think, here. Because he knows like if he wants to, he can pop out of infest and, and just rage and TP out. But mid lane, we're gonna see an arena come out as they're using this info. All these heroes bottom, they're like, okay, let's just take down analog mid. Really good play from the side of a Starbucks. Yeah, these uh these early rotations are working out. If they feel in control so far. Let's see if they can keep that going. Wait, he's still just in the centaur. He's just having time. Oh, the stomp, oh, the stomp actually misses. The Not really what he was hoping for, but they're going to turn around here onto the DK. The avalanche, the toss back. A ton of magic damage coming through from the gyrocopter. MNZ will chase down, finish off the visage as Viper is going to come in as well. Look for Michael Yor. Has managed to hold him in place for the moment, but they don't get any more out of this. And Life Stiller just TP's top. He's like, I'm gonna go farm over here. See you later, guys. I guess it's an even trade, but you force another hero bottom and Sacred's just chilling. Yeah, and... Okay, Dragonite did die, but his ult was almost done anyway, so it's not like a massive loss. And this Visage is just having a very slow start, which I think is definitely not the way this hero wants to operate. So I think maybe you're okay with that because you killed that Visage. Yeah, I'd agree. And the kill went to the Life Stealer. So I, I think with that, it's like Life Stealer, not really like the an amazing carry into the Medusa by any means, but you still need him to have a good game to kind of frontline for your team, I think. Because uh, I think like DK and Mars are going to be kind of... You're gonna like your DK is probably your infest initiator, right? Whereas like your mm -hmm. Mars is probably your counter initiator. My llama having a really rough one. He finally hits six. Immediately, one of his familiars get killed. So Ooh, have to wait a hundred seconds before he has his two familiars again. Yeah, I guess when you think about the Dragon Knights, if your familiar is not inside of Great Keeper's cloak range, those things are super dead. They die so fast. And, oh my god, he almost just lost another one. Bramble's the same thing, right? So, he's got to be very careful. Make sure that they stay inside the cloak range. I think they reduced the AoE on it, too. A while back. Yeah, it's only 900 range now. I feel like it used to be more. Barely even game overall, though. I mean, despite, you know, the Visage having a bad game, your Medusa is having a great game. K1 on, the, on this hero, he's already... And basically top of the net worth level nine and a half on his way to his manta style which it does slow down but the re recent nerf slows down the farm p potential of this a little bit but uh only a you know a few percent so i think it's still a pretty dang good item word in the mid lane scouting this whole rotation in yeah i mean this is like the weakness of this this draft, right? And even though it is pretty even, I, mean, I am a bit concerned for Heroic in the meat. Okay, they're trying to get this tiny. Yeah, he's yeah. super dead. I I think this Viper and this Visage needed to win their lanes more. So the fact that it's even, I think, is uh, pretty concerning for them, especially because now they need to like, they need to get kills. It's like, oh, the tiny right initiator. But instead, it looks like Divine Llama is going to get caught down here on this rotation. Arena committed. You'll take that. Oh, who are they trying to give it to? Your apparently. Your picks up <laughs> the kill there. That was definitely the one they wanted to give it to. Yep. Uh, Divine Llama has one familiar still alive. He's just trying his best not to feed it. But you have Grave Chill on Michael here, so I can't imagine it's gonna has any chance of escaping. Yeah, an extra hundred gold now for Sacred. Gold. I mean, he'll have the resummon when he comes back, but still, it's those give a decent amount of gold. On top of like the you know, 500 roughly that he mm -hmm. died with. Yeah, I mean losing he essentially he it took there was some time in between, but he lost both familiars, so that's 200 gold to the enemy. I mean that's practically another kill they got. So, you kind of see that it's 3k up, 13 minutes. Yeah, double blink dagger as well. I mean you have it on both Dark Mago and Sacred. We saw Mars just put his to use earlier in the river. 
uh, to try and finish off the tiny, but now Dark Mega with his own blink means you actually have a lot of playmaking potential on this five position Willow. And it's one of those things where I was like curious where this was going to take effect, but the fact that you can cast Bedlam on an ally, it makes sense now with Mars and this Dragonite having these like really solid blink stun initiations, being super tanky. You have good burst damage follow up from that as well. So yeah, I like it. I, I'm 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 feeling the position five Willow. Mid tower denied, sacred, unsatisfied, but no, he's gonna get broken. Decent damage out from the Viper, but a good bramble from your catches and a stolen Viper strike. You literally mentioned it. You cannot give this over to the Rubik. Oh, what a disaster. That's scary. I think he'll hold this for quite a while. I think he'll try to use it like two two to three times. I'm not sure how many times he can get away with it. Was it 180 seconds? Uh, 180 seconds. Yeah, you can get three yeah. casts out of this. They just smoke immediately. I mean... Why not? You have Blink Dragon Tail. You've got the arena available. He drops it. Actually misses barely onto KJ. You're just going to find that kill onto the Tiny. They immediately high ground drop a ward here. Try and give themselves some vision. Turned around by KJ. He's not going to get uh, let that fly. So, some damage out onto the well. Blink Dragon Tail again from Dark Mago. Sacred of the Spear back in the Visage. Just dies. Break catches the Dragonite. A ton of damage from this call down and the Stone Gaze as well. Both supports got to get out of here. Terrorize. We'll send the Medusa out, but Analog is looking for more. But these Brambles, dude, no way. They hold everyone at bay. It's starting to look like a, maybe a good return fight from Heroic. But yeah, the clean disengage, the Brambles. Oh, so many of them connected, like familiars, multiple heroes. So, Starback's going to continue to hold their lead. Lifestealer just farming this whole time. He's really, I mean, he's only a few hundred behind Medusa, and he is not normally a very fast farmer, so that does not bode well for you. And I, I think, of course, they still got to play out the rest of the game. We can still have our ups and downs, but Starbucks played this opening really well. I, I like their rotations a lot coming mid. Very early, we were like, what's he doing here, right? But even Heroic must have been confused, like, where did Rubik go? I'll play it safe. He's like, he's still missing. I don't know, guys. I guess I'm going to approach again, right? And then they finally kill him. That really hurt Viper's lane. I don't know what happened bottom, but Lifestealer winning this lane versus the Visage, I think was really good for them too. And now they've just like continued that momentum with these rotations. I, I feel like they've just been a step ahead of Heroic throughout this game. I think part of it is that just the Tiny can't really approach the Lifestealer in the lane and he's gonna get caught top lane here. Really nice rotation in from the uh, DK to help set this one up. But yeah, I think in the lane, right? Lifestealer doesn't mind hitting the tiny if he wants to try and hit him with like tree toss or the tree grab. But yeah, I thought the visage would do more. He just, I, I did watch a few times, like he pretty much used rage a lot, like pretty often to dodge the soul assumption damage, which it's a lot of mana that you're spending on the lifestealer, but it is also a lot of mana you're spending on the visage for that. Maybe just dodging a few of those is enough. Bottom tower is under but 4k lead, I mean, looking good for a Starbucks. I think the game is still fairly even. It just, I, I keep coming back to the fact that this Medusa is a very hard hero for a Starbucks to deal with this game. That's true. And I think that's probably where they have to mentally shift right now. Radiant's Whereas like one possible win condition was, okay, we win the lanes. We play around this visage. Now we're on the, the classic. All right, K1, get to it keep farming and then carry us <laughs> so um from a star back side i think they've got a firm grip of this game they're gonna still need to hit some item timings they're not strong enough to just you know run it down try to end but they want to hold this map we see them like making a rotation up here top they can eventually do roshan actually i think they can do it as long as they they like find a couple of kills first mars just going oh, in what dude that the arena buff right there old arena does not catch that visage but a very good placement from sacred schofield did manage to cut the wave but he's not gonna be able to get the second one without getting punished so stolen toss he would have loved to grab the avalanche but either way they'll find the kill schofield no way to escape it does it does protect the tier two at the end of the day like i think that is still a very worthy play mm-hmm yeah, you're doing the delay game here. 
like you said, Medusa will be strong, but she still needs a lot more items to to really carry fights. So she's just going to avoid fights, farm as much as she can. Her team will try to make the space. And it may cost them their lives, but they're going to try to limit that as much as possible. Ooh, I like this. I, I Lifestealer is going for a Halberd. That's really good to recognize. Medusa is going to be their everything. We're just going to take her out of the fight. All right, we're just going to, like, disarm, ignore her, kill everyone else. You kind of have to. This cool. is going to be one yeah. of those games where it's like, you can win fights on a Starbucks, but not into, like, the Medusa heads up. Like, you actually just, like you said, have to ignore her, try and kill the Visage, try and kill the Viper. If you manage to do that, like, if you kill Viper out of the gate, I think you're in a really good position because the long fights are always going to favor Heroic. Mm-hmm. Day one's also doing a really smart build here, I think, going for potentially a Disperser first. No, he's going to go back for the Scotty, so just a casual defusal. And he'll, he'll eventually get it to the Disperser. It is one of those items that is very good on this hero, being able to just surge yourself away from the enemy heroes. Especially when, like, Life Stealer gets open wounds eventually. That ability is really annoying to play around. Amplify damage picked up on the Rubik. Not really what I expected. I guess getting spooked knowing there was a hero in that area. They just decided to make sure they get it. Buy well, Medusa's courier. Good find there. Um, I think overall the Visage is somewhat recovering, and he does bring a lot to the team in general. Like typically, what with like Vlad's Orchid, I think this hero is not very tanky at the moment, and that is what I think is going to potentially be a problem for their draft. They are just going to go straight for the Tormentor, it looks like, and they are aware of this on Heroic. Blink Dagger is available. Schofield goes in, the Avalanche, and actually misses. Emmett gets the Rage off and turns around right onto the Tiny. He's gonna get caught from an Orchid. He needs an Infest, but he gets the Force Staff to safety, but he's still gonna go down. No! Last second, Last infest. second! The Infest into the DK. They will finish off their Tormentry here on Heroic, but a clean disengage from a Starbox. I could, dude, he was so close to dying. That's where every little thing matters, Visage almost level 12 and if the familiars are a little stronger I, that's a life sealer kill if life sealer was a little poorer maybe doesn't already have the halberd then he dies there too oh that would have been such a huge kill for them you're so happy on a starbucks <laughs> and yeah. was freaking out there running away spamming infest really good four staff from the rubik too right just getting him as far away as possible in a really sick placed arena just zoning mm -hmm. off the team so they can't get to him and Honestly, I thought he was dead. Like, that was uh, the shard from KJ just chasing him down with the rocket barrage. But, oh, my goodness. I was so close. Yeah. Well, even though you didn't get that kill, it does show you can you can take the fights a little bit, right? If you find the, uh, the right initiation. Currently, they've been getting a lot of... They've been being picked off a lot across the map. But when the fight starts in a little bit more of a controlled manner. You can kind of do it. You probably still need to catch up a little bit more, but yeah, not totally out of this. You are getting your Scotty delivered on your Medusa. It, unfortunately, her courier is dead, so she has to wait for that, but the Scotty is done, which will be a nice little bonus to this hero. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Wondering when they're gonna do Roche. I think they can do it anytime. Top tower is under attack. I'm wondering if they're waiting for something. I guess Orc is almost done on Dragonite. It's such an Mark. odd pickup. The Orchid? 
Yeah. I mean, he's got Manta, B like, Blink. That's, like, the standard stuff that we see. But Orchid, that is uh, a little deviation. I think it can it does... be good. I'm just not sure what in this game he sees he wants the Orchid for. It's got to be Visage. It has to be. Like, Stone Form is the only thing that you're, like, massively preventing that could give you... Because Stone Form is one of those abilities that can turn an entire fight. If you commit all these resources and you get Stone Form off and comes back with, like, you know, 15 to 20... How much is it? 15, 20, 25 percent of his HP. Uh, it can be pretty rough. So I mean, the orchid in that regard is pretty good. It's heroic gonna get the first ages. I mean, they're nowhere close to get to getting back to this. Uh, yeah, it looks like they are. This is pretty sick. Cause you definitely want that. I mean, you do have like Dragonite Manta spam to like whittle down the high ground, but. On the side of Heroic, you definitely want this game to just keep dragging out. You'll sacrifice a Tier 2, a little bit sad, but I don't think a Starbucks would feel comfortable pushing high ground without that Aegis. So you just bought yourself like 10 more minutes. Yeah, honestly, not at all. And uh, K1's still getting far, man. He is, I mean, he's neck and neck with the Lifestealer, but I feel much more comfortable about a Medusa late game than the Lifestealer. And the Life Slayer does finish up his Aghanim Scepter, so not only does he have the Heaven's Halberd Disarm, but he now has the Aghanim Scepter Disarm. The benefit of this into the Medusa is if she pops Stone Gaze, you just instantly disarm her. You just go for that Infest. It has a decent enough cast range. So, yeah, I, I, I like the idea behind it. I'll go ahead and grab their Tormentor now. And it goes away of Michael. So another save in the form of the telekinesis. A little bit longer throw range if you want to use it offensively as well. Bottom tower is under attack. All right, tier two push to the bottom lane. I don't imagine that a Starbucks don't want to fight into an Aegis Medusa all of a sudden, so they can actually use this not only to farm, but they're gonna get a tier two of their own. Dude, this is wild. They are 10k ahead and are actually afraid of the heroic lineup. What are they waiting? Like, is there an item that they're waiting for that you can see? I thought I'm not sure. Like, they got this early halberd. I thought they were going to start bringing it, which maybe they were, and they just lost the Aegis under their nose. They might have been trying to take a lot more, like, more of the Tier 2s before finally taking Aegis and then just having the whole time to slowly siege his high ground and maybe just getting caught off guard that they've lost the Aegis now. You're going for another Orchid on the Lifestealer. Yeah, I saw that. It's a little surprising. Are they just Again, like, going Bloodthorns late game? Is that it? Is I that guess. the reason? We do see that type of build like on Lifestealer, but I didn't think this was a game you needed two Orchids in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're almost to level 18 on the Dragonite. He's closing in on his Aghanim Scepter. You are out farming the map, so it could just be that a Starbucks feel like they have the the multiple core matchup, right? Like, yes, your life stealer into the Medusa is rough, but you technically have a very high scaling Dragon Knight as well. So maybe their idea here is, you know, we don't need to go high ground yet. We'll eventually overpower a Medusa by ignoring her. Uh, I mean, may, is that the, that has to be like one of the strategies they're thinking about uh, as Medusa is now just taking another tower in the top lane. Radiance top tower is under attack. They're taking the twin gate. Are they trying to wrap around or are they just creep cutting? I think they're just cutting. Do they have they have a fort for this? You could fort to try and protect the tier two here, but then you have no fort for the high ground. Okay, yeah, they are gonna fort here. No wave coming. I think unless Visage gets here quickly, I don't think you're killing this tower. Yeah, might have been a little bit slow on it, but no, they still got it very close. All right. Backdoor takes quite a while to kick in, actually. There's a lot of times I 
It's surprisingly long. Yeah. All right, and with that, Medusa has Butterfly now. So, she's getting stronger. Uh, just got the 20 talent of the Stone Gaze duration as well. All right, they're smoked. Heroic's tired of playing this cat and mouse game. They're like, we're going to fight you guys whether you want to or not. They had a ward here that scouted some of these heroes heading south into this tree line. If they can actually find someone, it would be massive, but... It doesn't look like they will. Oh no. Wild that the team that's 10k ahead is just not wanting to fight. I guess they really valued that Aegis. And they're really respecting the K1 Medusa. They know he's farmed. You don't even need to see the net worth graphs or anything like that. You just know K1's of the game. That guy's, he's on par <laughs> with us. Yeah, you can just assume usually that K1 is sitting at the top of the net worth chart in almost any game. Aegis expires, and we'll see the tier 3 uh, tokens start to come through as well. So I'm curious where he goes for this on the Medusa. Obviously, there's a couple really good items that he can pick up. Anything mana related. No, instead just goes to the Nemesis cards. Mid lane, the arena will send a two-hero spear. The best targets, the Medusa and the Viper. He goes down first. There's the disarm into the Medusa. Stone Gaze. Not going to be able to turn into a whole lot here. Lost a ton of mana. Now the chase continues. She's isolated on her own. They said, yep, we just waited for your ages to expire. That's all we wanted. Dude, what a, what a turn of events. This game has been silent for like six minutes. Maybe even longer. Orchid catches the Visage. Dragon Tail to follow it up. The spear pins him against the wall as well. Dark Mega with his Aghanim Scepter is just... Such a problem, and now looking for more KJ. He's gonna catch an open wounds. The life stealer easily gonna be able to chase him down. They turn their attention back on over to the Vistage. They have a spear, they have a telekinesis as well. Four dead as the Starbucks walk them back to their base. And suddenly they're ready to fight. All right, apparently a Starbucks was also using that as a farming Aegis, and they they just decided we chill for five minutes and then we go and Wow, <laughs> that that Aegis expires and you lose high ground like instantly. That is, it, that is insane. MNZ is farmed. He is here. No more dragon form, so it's maybe a little slower. But you got 15 seconds. You'll definitely get one set here, and then probably back to play it safe. You don't have your ultimates. Okay, maybe respecting the fortifies here. They also don't have like the. The BKBs are like a second off cooldown, and you're like Dragon Form is a second off cooldown. It's like, do you want to risk going high ground into that? It's maybe you turn into a good fight. I think the reason this last one went so well is you get the Viper and the Medusa on a single mm -hmm. spear. Like the the fact that Sacred gets easily the two most important heroes in the in the arena spear opener, it just. The chance of that happening again, I think, is unlikely, especially on the high ground. Well, that brings us back to the weakness of this draft, which is like why they wanted to win the lanes more. When that thing happens, like, oh, we arena two important heroes, like, there is no real response from Heroic. There's a tiny, but if you're making the jump, you're definitely popping BKBs on the side of a Starbucks. So. You're hoping Medusa hits Stone Gaze in time, and that's your counter initiation. It's it's pretty awkward. So I feel Dude, like the it's much easier for a Starbucks to find these fights. They just get get to keep baiting it out, and if we want to initiate, we do. And you don't have to be too scared of being initiated on by this heroic lineup. I, I honestly, a lot of this comes back to MNZ's item build being this early Aghanim Scepter pickup. Like, we see exactly the Stone Gaze comes out, and he instantly infests the Medusa, and she can't do anything. She's mm -hmm. She can't attack anyone. She, like, has a hard time, like, really getting away because there's so much ground control in these fights. Not only from, of course, the, the Mars, but Dark Willow. Like, throwing Bramble Maze out, Curse Crowns, like, also spawning more Bramble Mazes. There's just a lot of control. It's Medusa. They she just popped Medusa. the Manta. They know which one is real. They're pinging her out. Stone Gaze immediately. MNZ onto the wrong one. Stone Gaze connects, but you're stuck inside the arena as well. And 
There's a second Orchid. This Medusa's got no health. They need to get the numbers down here. K1 trying to run away, but the Open Wounds just tracks them down one by one, falling on the side of Heroic as a spear. will send the Visage back into the hands of the Starbucks, and just like that, three heroes about to fall on the side of the Dire and MNZ, patiently waiting for Visage to rise, to just go back to the grave. They've got creeps right here. They're gonna grab this middle lane. I'm wondering if they're just gonna go for it. Straight end. You, can you end might 100%. call the bluff that there's no buyback on Medusa. The safe play is top barracks. We'll see what they're feeling. Uh, Dark oh, yeah, Mango's they, hitting the tier fours. It. He's like, what do you think? This guy's got a buyback? He just bought BKB. Nah, no way. And they're right, and I don't think you can do anything about this. I, I think this is game. Yeah, I, I mean, you gotta bring every hero here and just start throwing spells. Toss someone into fountain. There's oh, exactly we're talking Step about the one. toss into fountain. Mars, he's got a Yules. Stalls out a little bit of the damage. Four staffs away and an infest from MNZ to top the boy off. 20 seconds until the Medusa rejoins the fight. The Viper, he's got to do some heavy lifting here if he wants to keep his team in this one. But S Star Box, they're not giving it up, man. They are just full focused on the throne constantly. Silence does catch MNZ, taking a decent chunk of damage. The call down doing some work as well, but they're coming back in. He pops the rage. He's still on the throne, but now it's turning his attention over to the Visage. And the arena's back, baby. Sacred on his dying wish traps the enemy team into the throne. And just like that, as Starbucks take game number one. What a patient victory, dude. Yeah, that was...